From tackling a player so hard, he went to jail because of it, to wildly pushing a manager. These are the scariest players in football history. And at number one, no one dares mess with the lion himself. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. The big Swede is right up there when it comes to scary. I mean, seriously, if I had to face this guy in a fight, I'd piss myself. Over the years, Zlatan has had some legendary battles with opposition players, and most times, he always comes out on top. That's why they're scared of him. He waited four years to get revenge on Marco Materazzi after a bad tackle in 2010. And what did Zlatan do? Kicked him in the ribs and sent Marco to the hospital. In 2017, Zlatan was in his first season at Manchester United when Tyrone Mings decided he could take on Zlatan by trying to rile him up. And I don't think Mings saw the Zlatan and Matarazzi incident, but it didn't matter, because when Zlatan realized what was going on, he decided to teach him a lesson. Elbow might have knocked Mings out cold. Zlatan's so scary. In 2000, he threatened his teammate Rafael van der Vaart and told him he would break his legs on purpose if he ever accused of attempting to injure him. What a guy. No wonder defenders were so scared of him. But not every defender, though. I bet there's one dude Zlatan won't have been able to take out that easy. And this guy is as scary as it gets. Bald hair, stone eyes, and the physique of a monster. No, not the 8th grade algebra teacher I hated so much. It's him. Yop Stom. Even his name sounds scary. In his prime, Stom was one of the best defenders in the world. And even though he won the treble with Manchester United in 1999, his manager Sir Alex Ferguson was so scared of him that he sold him two seasons later. Stom was a no-nonsense guy. He didn't take the piss from anyone. And if you tried to get in his way, well, yeah, pretty sure you understand. He looks like the hitman. I'd have Drake place a beat on him that he'd knock Zlatan out in a fight. Stom was scary, all right. But at AC Milan, he became even scarier. And that was thanks to meeting guys like this next dude, El Loco himself. He looked small, but when he was on the pitch, everyone knew he was around. Gennaro Gattuso. The man was a proper baller, but people often forget that. Why? Because he could flip the switch and start a war on the pitch in seconds. Gattuso was as feisty as they come. Hard hitting, crunching tackles, he'd take out any opponent, or even members of the opposition staff. The duty pushed was Tottenham's manager Joe Jordan. Told you the guy could start a fight in seconds, he even fights when he's happy. Yeah, that was supposed to be a celebration with his coach. What the heck? But at least Gattuso knew how to hit the calm switch when things threatened to get out of control. Can't say the same about this next dude. Imagine being so scary, you shave off all your hair just to scare the crap out of your opponents. Yep, Pepe used to have hair. When it comes to scary stuff on a football pitch, Pepe's right up there. So scary that even his teammates used to warn opponents not to rile him up. He's had a lot of crazy fights in the past, like almost making the GOAT handicapped here. But in 2009, Pepe completely lost it. See, he was part of a Real Madrid team that was fighting for the league. And being points off Barca with a few games left, he knew they couldn't afford to drop any more points. So when he conceded a pen in the game versus Deportivo with just minutes to play, Pepe thought he'd cost his team the opportunity to win the league and decided to take out his anger on Javi Casquero. I don't even have the words for this one. Awful stuff. It's almost as if Pepe enjoys being scary as hell, just like Nigel De Jong does. De Jong was supposed to be a holding midfielder, capable of transitioning from defense into attack. But I think he only ever heard the attack part when he was on the pitch, and took the word literally. Whoa, there's no escaping that. 
De Young also had some cray tackles on the field over the years, but in 2010, he had the entire world stunned after one of the scariest moments in football history on live TV happened the World Cup Final. And with the game already in extra time, the players were doing their best to conserve energy in the dying minutes. De Young? He figured that was the best time to pull this off. Could have taken Alonso's heart out. Imagine a midfield partnership of De Young and Joey Barton. They'd have more red cards than tackles completed. To the OGs, Joey Barton needs no introduction. He preferred the chaos to actual football. His CV of scary stuff is out of this world. In May 2008, Barton was sentenced to six months in jail after getting involved in a fight in the Liverpool city center. And just days after coming out, he almost went back in again. This time, he admitted to attacking his teammate Ulzman Dabo on the training ground. Still, these two don't top the list of Barton's scariest episodes. In 2012, he stole the show. The final day of the Premier League season, Manchester City vs QPR. And no, it's not the Aguero moment this time. Joey Barton mixed the sporting events up and thought he was competing in the WWE Royal Rumble because he took on three City players at a go. Took on Vincent Company, Mario Balotelli, and Sergio Aguero at once. What a guy. If he had gone a little harder, pretty sure that iconic Aguero moment would have never happened. Joey Barton is a legend when it comes to the dark arts of scaring opponents. Just like Big Dunk, who'd do anything to win, even if it meant choking his opponents for it. Now, don't get me wrong, because back in the day, Duncan Ferguson used to be one of the best hold-up strikers in the league. But he took the hold-up part way too seriously. The guy holds the joint record for the most red cards in the league. At first, I thought the refs were just taking it out of him because of his reputation. Until I saw this. He takes him up and Ferguson delivers the perfect choke slam. Big Dunk even had to serve jail time in the past while playing for Everton too. Guess you could say his actions made him scary enough, but Oliver Kahn sometimes didn't even need to say anything to freak out his opponents. Just watching him move out his goal could make a grown man piss himself. He's one of the greatest goalies ever, the only goalkeeper to ever win the FIFA World Cup Golden Ball Award. But it's pretty hard to remember any of that when you see him moving like this. Khan was as scary as it gets. His face when yelling or screaming at opponents usually gave them nightmares. Still, as cold as this is, Khan's got nothing on who many people believe is the scariest footballer of all time, Roy Keane. In his playing career, no one dared mess with him. Always a bad move. Despite being a more than decent footballer back in the day, Keane's tackles highlighted his career, both on and off the pitch, and his legendary battles too. Can't even forget that infamous tunnel incident back in 2004, when he almost started a bust up in the biggest game of the season. Even the ref had a hard time calming Keane down. The thing is though, Keane's scariest moment came in 2001, when he plotted the biggest revenge story the game has ever seen. He waited four years to hit out at Erling Haaland's dad Alfie, after Alfie accused him of diving to win a pen. And when Keane finally had Alfie in his sights, he made him retire on the spot, took out his kneecap and didn't even wince. Pretty sure you'd be thinking with stuff like this, Keane should be the top pick. But what if I told you there was a guy so scary, even Roy Keane was scared of him? You've most likely have seen this face before. Juggernaut from X-Men, Vinnie Jones. But before he became a Hollywood star, Vinnie Jones was a hardcore footballer. That tackle on Eric Cantona is as dangerous as they come. Vinnie Jones' insane moment, though, came in 1994, when he took out Roy Keane. First time I've seen Keane get hit and not react, because even Keane knows not to mess with this guy. Whew, if I get taken out like this, 
The only way I'm letting it slide is if I find out the guy who hit me has subscribed to Goalzone.